Hey there, I'm Mr. Polarski and I'm your host today. Video Math Lessons. Today's topic is an Algebra 2 topic, Probability of Multiple Events. If you're one of my students, we'll be examining Section 9-7 of your textbook today. Dependent events. Dependent events are when the outcome of one event does affect the outcome of a second event. Independent events, when the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of a second event. Example 1, we are to classify each pair of events as dependent or independent. Part A, spinning a spinner and selecting a marble from a bag that contains marbles of different colors. First thing you want to notice is that there are two events here, so this is multiple events. The first event being the spinning of a spinner. And the second event, the selecting of a marble, or the choosing of a marble. Now, if you think back into your mind for a minute, will the marble you choose be affected by what you spin on the spinner? No, it will not. Therefore, this is an independent event. Part B, select a marble from a bag that contains marbles of two colors. Put the marble aside and select a second marble from the bag. Again, we have two events here. The first event is choosing the or selecting the first marble. And the second event is selecting another marble. The key thing here is that once you take the first marble out of the bag, you're going to put it aside. Therefore, that's going to change the outcome or the probability of the second event since you'll be putting the marble aside and not back into the bag. Therefore, the probability of the second event depends on the outcome of the first event. Here we have a formal definition of the probability of A and B. If A and B are independent events, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. You can see a concrete example of the probability of A is equal to one half and the probability of B is equal to one third, then the probability of A and B happening together or happening will be one half times one third, which will give you one six. Example two, a box contains 20 red marbles and 30 blue marbles. A second box contains 10 white marbles and 47 black marbles. If you choose one marble from each box without looking, what is the probability you will get a blue marble and a black marble? These are independent events because we're talking about two different boxes. To write this out with the probability notation, we would write down the probability of blue and black. We have two separate events going on, but we want them both to occur. By the definition of the probability of independent events, this would be written down as the probability of choosing a blue marble times the probability of choosing a black marble. Replacing the general equation we wrote with uh, some actual numbers, the probability of a blue marble is 30 out of 50, and the probability of choosing a black marble is 47 out of 57. Using a calculator or your general math skills, you would multiply these two fractions together, which would give us a final result of 47 over 95. So you got 47 chances out of 95 to get a blue and then a black marble. When two events cannot happen at the same time, the events are called mutually exclusive events. When two events can happen at the same time, they are called inclusive events. The probability of A or B, if A and B are mutually exclusive events, then the probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. I like to use, instead of not mutually exclusive, the word inclusive. If A and B are inclusive events, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Example three, are the events mutually exclusive? In 
part A, uh, rolling an even number or a prime number on a number cube. Well, the even numbers are 2, 4, and 6. The prime numbers on a number cube are 2, 3, and 5. As you can see, the 2 counts as an even number and as a prime number. So, this is not mutually exclusive. We would call this inclusive since the two is being counted twice. It's being counted as an even number and it's being counted as a prime number. The next example, rolling a prime number or a multiple of six on a number cube. To determine if this is mutually exclusive, like we did in part A, it'd be a good idea to list out the favorable outcomes. The prime numbers on a number cube are 2, 3, and 5, and the multiples of 6 on a number cube are just 6, or is just 6. Don't confuse multiples with factors. Multiples of 6 would be 6, 12, 18, so on and so forth. The multiples of 6 on a number cube are just 6. Since there is no overlap or no number is being counted twice, this would be a mutually exclusive event. And sometimes uh, I'll refer to this as there is no overlap. Example 4, at a restaurant customers get to choose one of four vegetables with any main course. About 33% of the customers choose green beans and 28% choose spinach. What is the probability that a customer will choose beans or spinach? So the probability of beans, choosing beans, or choosing spinach. The way this is written, this is going to be a mutually exclusive event. We would write that down as the probability of beans plus the probability of spinach. And we replace those, those probability notations with the actual probabilities themselves. 33% plus 28%. And so the probability of a customer choosing beans or spinach is 61%. And here you can see a little note I wrote later that this is mutually exclusive. Moving on to example 5, a spinner has 20 equal size sections numbered 1 from 1 to 20. If you spin the spinner, what is the probability that the number you spin will be a multiple of 2 or a multiple of 3? Now this is an in inclusive event because from the numbers 1 to 20, there are numbers that can be a multiple of 2 and a multiple of 3, not just a multiple of 2 or 3. The multiples of 2 and 3 are 6, 12, and 18. Those numbers are counted as a multiple of 2 and as a multiple of 3. So when we write this out with probability notation, the probability of spinning a number that is a multiple of 2 or spinning a number that is a multiple of 3 needs to be written down with the definition of inclusive events, which will look something like this. The probability of a multiple of 2 plus the probability of a multiple of 3 minus the probability that the number is a multiple of both 2 and 3. That accounts for the overlap. That accounts for the numbers being counted twice. The probability that you're going to get a multiple of 2 is 10 over 20. The probability that you're going to get a multiple of 3 is represented with the fraction 6 over 20 and the probability of getting a number that is a multiple of 2 and a multiple of 3 simultaneously is 3 over 20. When we simplify that math, 10 plus 6 minus 3 will give us 13 over the denominator of 20, or you have a 
13 out of 20 chance of spinning a number that's a multiple of 2 or a multiple of 3. I want to thank you for watching the video today. If it's helped, feel free to leave a comment or rate the video.